now in a couple of months, thousands of British football fans will flock to Germany, hoping to see England or Scotland bring back the European Championship trophy. The crowds will be singing, the drinks will be flowing, England will probably be losing, but fans have been warned not to have too many steins as German beer is often stronger than pints here at home. The Foreign Office issued official advice telling supporters to expect a stronger kick in their pre-match lager and urge them to drink responsibly. It's never going to work. Joining me in the studio now is A.D. Smith, a drinks expert and presenter of The Three Drinkers, and also Marco Helliwell, an England fan. Marco, I feel like we just found you on the street because it just says you're an England fan. Where, where were you? Uh, well, actually, I'm from the half-timers, uh, a band <laughs> that uh, was previously 33-1 uh, in the last World Cup uh, with Coming Home for Christmas. Yes. Um, so uh, we're releasing another song as well um, for the Euros. Um, so, yeah, we, we specialise in uh, England tournament songs. And do you get on the lagers when you're, when you're at the games? I'm an Englishman, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, that's a silly question, really. And um, have you been to Germany before, drank over there? I have, yeah, I've been to, I'm a big Arsenal fan. I went to uh, Bayern Munich away. I knew Munich there was away. something wrong with you. Yeah. I knew it. I knew I could tell when you walked in, I thought, uh, something wrong with this guy, you're sure. an Arsenal fan. I should have asked before going on air. You sure? but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so in the Champions League last time round, uh, I went to Bayern Munich away. I've spent a good amount of time in the beer halls in Munich. And, and is, uh, is it stronger? You find a bigger kick? I mean, uh, I mean, I'm there for like a football game. I'm, I'm sort of drinking excessively anyway. <laughs> if you, uh, you know, if you get enough bratwurst down you and uh, you know, sort of level it out with a bit of water as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, you know, we're sort of seasoned drinkers here. We, I think we can handle it. Yeah, AD, yeah, you're, you are the most seasoned of all drinkers. Look at your face. You've had a hard <laughs> life. But <laughs> is it, how much stronger is German beer than, than our English stuff? So it's it's a good amount stronger. If we look at our British beers and our British ciders, I mean, our British beer is coming at about 4.4% alcohol. But uh -huh. if we go over to the German beer, it's anywhere between about 4.5 to 5.2. So it's, it's much stronger on the ratio spectrum. Now, I've got a couple of facts here. So... English beers, right? If right. we look at an, a light lager or an English dark ale, 4% ABV. Goes up a bit, English bitter, 4.2%, and then an English pale ale, 4.7%. Oh. Now, if we compare that with the German beers, we've got the Munich Lager, the German Pilsner, and the Hefeweizen starting at 5%. Okay. And then it goes up from there. Schwartz beer, 5.2. Dunkelweizen, 4. Oh, sorry, 5.4. Oktoberfest, which everyone seems to be obsessed with because of mm -hmm. just the name, comes in at 5.6. Then Weissenstock, wait for it, 7.6% ABV. Ooh. That's going to get you merry a lot more than our British beer. Now, do... British people drink British beer much. All That's I think what of I was is Carling. Say. All I have is Cronenberg, uh, Carlsberg, Peronis. Other mm. beers are available, but but I feel like we don't really drink English beer anymore, do we? Yeah, I just feel like we're imported sort of all the worst beers from all the other countries, really, <laughs> and we and we lap it up, really. If I'm being honest, I mean, one point I would like to make. I mean, tell me, you're the expert, but. There's less chemicals in German beer, right? Is that the, the way it's brewed? Oh, it's pure. There's like laws there, right? I mean, that there is, to be honest, across the board in England and Germany, it has to be made to a certain kind of quality basis. I would say that possibly because of some of the production methods they use, it could be a little bit more natural. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't go as far as saying that there's not loads of like chemicals. It, beer shouldn't have chemicals in any way. Otherwise, we shouldn't be allowed to consume it. Um, but as a nation... Like, regardless of football, football aside, we are known for consuming more alcohol. I mean, yeah. the typical gin and tonic pour that someone does at home is three times the amount that you're meant to have in a gin and tonic. Well, all that means is that our, public, our publicans are not serving us proper, proper measures. They're doing these little <laughs> tiny ones. Um, I've got to be honest, boys. I don't like beer. I hate it. I, know I want to be a lad when I'm part of the gang, but I hate beer. And I stay trim by not drinking it. I prefer a nice rosé. That's, that's me. I will, and I will go to, to watch England and I'll be the, the idiot with a glass of rosé sipping like that. Yeah, I'm I, sorry. I love rosé. That's it. I love you for that. And this is one thing, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, men don't drink rosé. No, I'm... Absolutely not. Absolutely not. As soon as the not. sun is out, right? I am there with a glass of rosé. And this is the thing, over the past five years, there have been more men, year on year, consuming beautiful rosé from all across the world. Wow. Um, that was a seamless link, because I, I actually have say, some facts as well about rosé. Yeah, about well, I rose. see we've got some glasses on the table. We've got some glasses on the table. So, allow me to tell you this as well. So, there's 3.3 .3 to 3.5 units, on average, per beer in Germany. Uh -huh. Whereas, if you have a rosé, it's only... 2.1 units. 
And what? There's, yeah, so th there's a couple of little tricks as well to not getting drunk because we should drink to have things Thank that you. we enjoy. We shouldn't drink just to get drunk. No, that's, of course. That's not what it's like. I never drink just to get drunk. Never. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my favorite rosés. And um, as you know, I also write a column on The Independent all about drinks. And this is one of my top choices for rosé with the best personality this is of delicious. 2024. So this is Minuti from Provence. Have a little smell. And you know what, lads? Drink rosé, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's yeah. a beautiful, fruit-forward, gorgeous wine that'll keep you refreshed in the sunshine, less units in it. The trick is, pour a little bit less into your wine glass. When you've got a beer cup or a beer glass, yeah. the lads usually always get a pint, right? You're not yeah. gonna get someone going and saying, oh, I'll have a half pint, because all their mates are gonna mock them. Mm -hmm. First of all, never feel bad about having a half pint. That is totally fine. But if you're gonna go on the rosé, you can have a wine glass and pour a little bit less in, and then just keep having a bit of water. In between every glass of rosé, have a glass of water. How much is this I bottle of rosé going to set me back? So this particular rosé here is about, this one's £19, which is a little bit more on the premium side. I don't know however. how much you think I get paid for doing this show, mate, but it's not enough. <laughs> 19 quid for a bottle of wine. Well, you better have a couple more sips. <laughs> <don't you? laughs> and where's it available? Everywhere? So not, you, not down my local Asda, I, I assume. You can get this at Waitrose. You can get it at a lot of the major supermarkets. Um, they've got the Prestige Rosé, and then they've got M by Minuti, which is their kind of more affordable range. But Sounds like a bit of me, that one. <laughs> the affordable <laughs> rosé. <laughs> Marco, quickly, you're wearing the, the, the famous red England football shirt. In the news today, they're saying that our new away kit is outselling the, the home kit because of the nonsense about the flag. It's like, I don't want to get brought into this. No, no, I'm uh, bringing you in. Thing. I'm no, bringing bring, you no, bring in. Bring me in. I mean, look, what I would say is that, you know, uh, Nigel Farage absolutely butchered the flag on his, you know, sort of campaigns and made it purple mm. and whatnot. And, you know, we're not sort of talking about that on the uh, British Army um, uh, uniform. The, the, the Union Jack is in khaki. So, yeah. you know, and there's not as much, up, uh, you know, uproar about that. So, um, listen, it's just a, it's a culture war and I just don't want to get involved in it. And what I would say is it's negativity that we don't need before going to, to the Euros. And, uh, you know, we love being a bit negative before the Euros. We've just got to get behind the team because yeah. it's coming home, guys, right? Yeah. 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 Like, it's, it's coming home. singing now. It's we coming, sing. Yeah. Cheers Cheers to, to England. <laughs> Toast to England. To England. To England. To England. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you, AD, and thank you, Marco.